So my brothers and sisters, it really is good to see all of you. But just to take a poll real quick, how many of you lost your seats today because of the, the cattle herding that we're doing? <laughs> Feels a little strange, doesn't it? I had to laugh. We have, we've had two parishioners try to move them at daily mass already, and I had to yell at them. It wasn't a pleasant experience. But you know, for us, it's, it's been really a crazy couple of months, hasn't it? And uh, I don't know about all of you, but I just know in my own life it's taken a bit of a toll. Um, and it's hard to explain. It just kind of eats away at you a little bit that just something's not quite right. Something's not the way it should be. And as I've reflected on this quite a bit, it really comes down to, it's like we're being blocked from being who we're truly meant to be. Because we're made to be in communion with one another. We're made to be jolly and greet one another and live in relationship. We're, we're made to have cookouts and get-togethers without worrying about getting each other sick. We're made to praise our God together and to celebrate the sacraments and to truly live our faith as a community, as a family. And I can't help but think that, in many ways, this virus has taken that away from us, but also shown us how precious these things are and how we all need to strive for these deeper interpersonal relationships more. When we talk about the Holy Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity is that the Father loves the Son so much and the Son loves the Father so much that that relationship of love is the Holy Spirit that the greatest revelation in the Trinity is this love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's in the image of the Trinity, in this image of this divine, perfect love, that we were created. Our lives do not have meaning, do not have purpose, without love, without being able to love and being loved in return. And I'm sure many of us here know the pain that comes from not being fulfilled in that love, being hurt by that love. But yet, this is our goal as human beings. In fact, this is the goal of the church. You look at most of Jesus' teaching. In fact, his summation of the Ten Commandments, to love God above all things and to love your neighbor as yourself. It really comes down to that love. Now, there are many interpretations of what this love looks like. And there's many different ways of expressing it. Some think that love looks like violence or a protest. Some think that love looks like living for yourself and building up your own castle and fortune or fame. Some people think that love is being by yourself and not needing anyone else and not depending on anyone else. But there are those who truly know love that know that love is, call, is found in our call from God is found in our vocations to love. And it is that love that truly makes each and every day worth living. When we talk about the Trinity, it's also a reflection that God made us in his own image. And there's really two main points. In fact, if you look back to the Second Vatican Council, Gaudium et Spes, chapter 24, verse 3, just showing that I know these things in case you were wondering, we see two things here. And this chapter is actually written by John Paul II. And it tells us that God created us for ourselves. That we weren't created because God needed us. We were created for our own sake. That God didn't create us so that we could do something for him. God created us to do something for us. That all of us were created for our own sake. We were not created slaves. We were not created as indentured servants to someone else, let alone God. We were created free. And we were created free with the ability to think and to have reason and to be able to determine the way we choose to live our lives, the way we choose to love, the way we choose to be. The second part is that none of us truly finds ourselves without being able to give ourselves to another. That we do not find satisfaction in this life unless we can lose it. Those who lose their lives will save it. And for us, this is expressed very beautifully in marriage. When the spouses unite giving each other 
to one another, but also in other forms of life, other vocation. And thus love needs to be expressed. Love needs to be freely given. And to be able to truly give ourselves in honor of God for the sake of our brother and sister is when we truly find who we are. And it's amazing, and I think many of us know it, that when we can truly give of ourselves to another, it's then we really figure out who we are. We figure out how wonderful life can truly be. In a sense, we become more and more ourselves than less and less we live for ourselves. And this is exactly the mystery that we celebrate in the Holy Trinity, how Jesus gave himself for us. And by the act of Jesus giving himself to us, especially on the cross, we came to know who he truly is and his great love for us. It was only by Jesus dying on the cross that humanity realized that we can trust God, that God is not egotistical like we are, that God is not narcissistic like we are, that God is not in it for himself, but he's in it for us. And we see this by his dying and his love that he shed. And for each of us, we are called to be children of the Blessed Trinity, and we are called to truly live for the sake of one another. It's a beautiful thing when each of us can have contact with someone who really needs us. Maybe that's a child or a grandchild. Maybe it's someone who is down on their luck in life. Someone who is poor. Someone who suffers. But for each of us to really have that contact with people in need, someone that we can really give generously to, someone who is in desperate straits, it helps us to learn how to love. It helps us to learn the beauty of love and the impact that our love can make on one another. Because one of the greatest lies that the devil tries to convince us of is that our love doesn't matter. Our love just hurts other people. Our love doesn't matter. When really that's not true, not even close. I think one of the lies of this virus that some people have come to believe is that we really don't need one another. We really don't need to be in communion. We can do everything virtually. We can do everything at a six-foot distance. I think all of us here and all of us at home know that's hardly the case. I think all of us are really pining to get back to normal, wondering when it can be. But for each of us, there's so much that we can do in love now. Whether we're six foot, 12 foot, or less, we can still love. And we can still make that impact on other people's lives. There are a lot of people angry these days. Just got to turn on the news these days. There are a lot of people angry all over the world. And I can't help but think that this anger is really coming from these couple of months of feeling like caged animals, as many people in the cities have felt. I think around here, life has kind of continued on normally. We really haven't felt the effects too much of this until probably this past week, and even then some, not a whole lot yet. If you go down to Madison and Milwaukee, Chicago, life is completely different. Green Bay, completely different. And I think this is why there's so much anger being expressed. And of course, when we get angry, it kind of comes out sideways. Oftentimes, we express our anger on other things versus the thing itself. And I think that might be happening in our society right now. But that anger comes when we do not live in love, when we can't express our love, when we feel that the other's not receiving our love, we get angry. And also when we are not being loved like we should be, we get angry. I mean, how many people think that they have an argument against God because God didn't do this or God didn't do that? God wasn't there for me like I expected him and out of anger, they're not coming to church. They're not going to worship God. They're not going to live like God wants them to live. Out of anger. But see, for us, we've got to resolve those disagreements with God first. And sometimes it seems futile and city. God is perfect. How can I have an argument with him? Well, we do. A lot of people live with some anger and resentment about God, about what we think he did and didn't do. But these are beautiful things to pray about, especially on this Trinity Sunday. Because remember, Jesus is summation of the Ten Commandments, that when we have the love of God properly rooted in our lives, it's then we can love one another as neighbor. But we've got to get that relationship with God right first. And it is knowing his love, 
be able to express our love for him and our brothers and sisters, that then we're able to have the courage to love in this world, to love one another even if it might get us a little bit hurt, even if it might be a bit thorny, to know that it's worth it in the end and it is so necessary. Over these past couple of months, I've had a lot, a lot of phone calls from a lot of families, a lot of teens, marriages. I think I should have had a lot of more too, so if you've been waiting to call me, this week would be a good time. I've got time, don't worry. But I think it has rocked us to our core. I think it's all kind of shown us where we need to grow, where our love needs to be perfected, where our love needs to be deeper. I feel for a lot of families with four, five, six kids at home with all the online school and stuff these past couple of months. I'm sure there's many parents out there who have lost quite a bit of hair and not because of old age. But you know, I think God's going to bring a lot of good through this. A lot of good. I've been amazed at my uh, weekly trips to the grocery store. Just how many people are talking about God in ways they never did before. I've also been amazed how many people have reached out. How many people are seeking God right now? One thing I've heard from a lot of my brother priests and even myself is how many people are watching the YouTube stuff we're doing. It's quite amazing. All over the place. And how many people I'm hearing from, from all over the place because of that. But then my great sadness has also been how much it's gone down since Easter. I mean, the views are literally a third of what they were during Lent. And I think that does say something, because at first I think a lot of people were very eager, very eager to do this, very eager to watch these things and continue the faith as much as possible. And then I think the weather got nice, and we just got a little bit more frustrated. Maybe some of these things fell off the map. But I think here's our chance to get back on track, this Trinity Sunday. To get back on track with love for the Lord, love for God, and to truly look at the way we're loving one another, the way we're treating one another. And really asking the Lord, how am I doing? In all humility, in all honesty. Every night we go to bed, that is a beautiful question to ask the Lord. How did I do today? How did I love today? Did I do a good job generously giving the love that you entrusted me today? Did I share that love freely? Or did I change it? Did I add some thorns and daggers to it? Did I hold some of it back? But every night to reflect on that. Did I give everything that I was given today? Did I live every bit of life that I was supposed to live today that you gave me? Did I build up the kingdom today as you've been calling me to? And as we celebrate this Mass Day, let's pray in a special way that we may have the desire to really hear from the Lord and to pray that our generosity and love may increase and then our perspective and who God is for us, our relationship with him may deepen. That whatever these next weeks and months bring for us, whatever happens, quite frankly, we continue loving. We continue striving for a deeper sense of community. And we keep looking for the way that God calls us to be together and to truly cherish one another in our lives. God bless you.